so far. I yeah, well, go ahead. I think there's a decent chance that uh, Mike might show up. <clears throat> the other That's Mike. Cool. Yeah. Right. That's cool. Um, I uh, I was messing around last night and I made a guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. How did I miss you? What time were you on? Um, uh, probably around the same time. Or oh, you were on earlier, right? You did Dab and Diamond Death. Yes. Yeah, we um, Mike and I saw him whenever he came on to build his character. Oh, yeah, that was me. Yeah. And that yeah. caused much confusion because of your name. And I because oh. Mike Morrison came on last night and I didn't even I didn't even mean to like chat with him because I was just going to work on some stuff on Fantasy Grounds and I was like, "Good job on creating Davin, man. You really got a lot done." And he's like, Who, "Who's Davin?" <laughs> so Let's, well, I'm gonna say like if he had the same name, that would be <laughs> like, that would that would have been crazy, yeah. <laughs> mind blowing. Yeah. yeah, because I I was like eh, I'm gonna try to pick something that's not uh, what everyone picks, and I'm like I'm gonna do a dwarven cleric, and then <laughs> he said that. that yeah. Thinking. But I guess that's a pretty if you're gonna be a cleric, it's a popular class. I guess. Yeah, of course. And it's fine. It's like it's no big deal. I told him too. It's like if you want to do a dwarven cleric too, it's not gonna be a big deal because it's not like. It's not like you know. guys are creating a party that's going to be together forever. You know what I mean? Like, right. you know, you're probably very rarely actually play together. You know, mm -hmm. but, but uh, he likes his. He made a he made a uh, half elf paladin. Very cool. Yeah, and he's, he's I'm doing pretty much done. Like we worked, we went through it um, pretty well last night. But we were just doing um, I am. I didn't have like my um, you know, my microphone set up and everything. Oh, so okay. We were typing, so it was a little bit more tedious, but. Right. Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah. So, um, it was, I, I like logged on and I went on there and I was like, I had a hard time remembering how to get started. Like I couldn't, like I was clicking on my old guy on his, where'd he go? Hold up. Salazar. I was oh. clicking on uh, him and tr I was like trying to click in the field to change it to, from human to, uh, to dwarf. Yeah. And I, I couldn't do it. And I'm like, Ugh, I couldn't do anything. And then I finally remember like, you said go into the book and then drag and drop. And right, right, exactly. Then, yeah, then I was on fire. So I think I got, I think I got it mostly down. What's interesting though is like I'm looking at Salazar here, and I'm looking at uh, like I'm looking at Davin and Salazar side by side, and I see like under which one do you have? You have you have both right now? Um, yeah, I just pulled them up. Are you able to actually to control both? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at, I have both cards open now. Okay. Um, that, like, under race for Salazar, it, there's a typo, obviously. I see that. But you dragged it, you dragged it in, right? Yeah, I'm not sure how that happened. Oh, you can, you can actually type in there. After you drag it in, it looks like, I just corrected it. I must have, I must have, like, hit something when all this typing. So it must be like, you know, you can drag in the entry, and then the red dragon icon will open that, the actual entry from the PHB. But then you can alter it in order to change, like, house rules sort of thing. Like, you know, if you don't want to have your race actually say human variant. If you just want it to say mm -hmm. human, for instance, so it looks right. better. You know, you could you could probably just change it. I think that's probably the intent. Okay. Um, and then in Davin, in Senses, I see Dark Vision. He has a crazy range on his Dark Vision. 6,014 feet. It's pretty awesome. That doesn't look great. <laughs> it should be, should be 60. He's got telescopic vision, too. All right. I'll correct that. I see that. You're good spotting uh So this first thing that popped up. That's the only thing I looked at. I haven't looked at the other tabs. Um, oh, I Mikey actually found out last night. I didn't even realize that if you if you click on the um, portrait on the upper left hand corner. Yes, you can pick up a guy. Uh, yeah, but you're not limited to just those guys. Like there is. What? What? Do you, I, there should be two bags there. What are the bags? Do, do you well, there's only. So there's only one bag, and I wasn't happy with the selection, so I didn't do anything. Okay, so is it the one called Fantasy Portraits? Yeah. Yeah, they suck. Okay. Um, so. Now, I have a bag that I guess is only available to me mm, okay. called D&D &D 5e, which actually has like official artwork, which is probably a lot better. So let me go into Dwarf, and I will, uh, I will see if... Uh, He's a male, I assume, right? 
Yes. Do you have any idea what he looks like? Do you have any in? You know, is he like gray hair, or brown hair? Is, I don't know if I. I don't know if I nailed that. In, doesn't matter. Age form. Like here's a here's but a here, here's a dude that has sort of like a spellcastery look. How's that guy? Cool. I. He'll like, do it. Yeah. <laughs> He'll do it. All right. Yeah, I just realized this. I didn't. So it was kind of like a cool thing that I. That's cool. Uh, I found out kind of comes with the package here. So I did have a couple questions here. I, I got a little bit confused when I got to like the ace, the armor class, because when I. That's going to be in your inventory. When I put in weapons in there, it didn't seem to. Wait. When you put in armor, you mean? Yeah, armor and shield in there didn't calculate anything, so I yeah. guess I leave it up to you. Yeah, I noticed that um, when I've been playing with my guys and like, with my own players, or with my own characters, I mean, and with Mike's last night, that it doesn't auto-calculate AC, which is kind of weird, but it's not that hard to do. I mean, you obviously figured it out. Um, I think I did it right. So I picked, like, scale mail, and it says, in the book it says 14. So that, that means no matter what your base AC is, it just becomes 14. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. It's ba it's so it's, it's starting four. with base ten. I mean, it should be base ten is basically um, from old editions, which they probably need to change a little bit because now it's supposed to just be scale mail gives you a plus fourteen to AC. Like you, your AC starts at zero, but you have a plus fourteen. But okay. but anyways, you did it right. You added four instead of fourteen and two for the shield, so that's good. Yeah. That yeah. Looks good. Um, does it give you? Does scale mail give you stealth disadvantage? Do you know? I don't. Think so? Because you would want to check that box if that's true. Let's look it up here in armor. I'm looking on the book. Is it? Let's see. It, it says. It does. Oh, it does. Yeah, I see that stealth disadvantage. So yeah. I just check that box. Okay. Right. And then what will happen is, is if you go to your skills tab now, you'll see. Um, Actually, you won't see it, but go ahead and just click I on the... I see a little thing next to, to the dex there. And yeah, that's, that's, a, that's an armor breastplate, and that's always there. Um, oh, but it, okay. But um, that's just to tell you that that skill can be affected by this ruling if you're wearing the right kind of armor, which you are. So I think if you roll the die now for stealth, if you make a stealth check, it'll actually roll it at a disadvantage automatically. Go ahead and try that. Um, I added it back to here. You can just double click on it. Oh. oh I have too many windows open now. Hold on a second. Alright. Double click on stealth? Yeah. No, well on the on the die on the right. Where it says zero where your bonuses. Wait a second. I'm in the wrong place. I was looking in the in the skills tab. Well, oh, I see it. I see it. That die is sneaky. Okay. So take off. Take first of all, unstar stealth. Yeah. See, there you go. Oops, sorry. All right. Get that off of there. Right. But you see, when you rolled it, that it rolls up. It automatically rolls a disadvantage now. You don't even have to think about it. I see it. it. I see it. Good. So, so that's pretty sweet. So you don't what have else? to worry about it. It automatically applies, which is nifty. Um, it's good. I feel like was I'm there some other rule. What else? Uh, so, did you do the standard array for abilities, or did you do a point by? I did twenty-seven point by, and it looks like uh, I was a hill. I'm, I'm a hill dwarf, so I got plus one uh, in the in the wisdom. I think it was originally sixteen. Mm -hmm. And uh, that should be right. Is that what it is? Because if that's the case, you're gonna have to redo. Something here. Hold on. Dwarf. Sub race. Hill dwarf. Oh, well, it, it showed up in the race there, Hill dwarf. Yeah, that's fine. Yep, your wisdom okay. score increases by one. And what is it? Your con? Is that what every dwarf gets? Yeah, con goes by two. So, <clears throat> so here's the deal. When you're doing the twenty-seven point buy, yeah. Before you add your racial ability bonuses. You can't mm -hmm. have a score that's higher than fifteen. So, you you had your wisdom start at sixteen, which it can't do. I can't do that. Hmm. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm gonna make sure I didn't miss any. Why did I do that? Okay. 
So let's look at uh, what you've got here. At point by. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so where's my pencil? So a 14 would cost you 7. A dex 10 would cost you 2. Con would have been 12 because you've modified it by 2, so that would have cost you 4. Int was 8, which cost you nothing. Wisdom should be 15, so we'll call it a 15 for now. Okay. As 9, which would have been raised to 16, you know, because okay. of your thing. And right. then charisma is 10, which is 2. So you had 9, 13, 22. Wait. 9, 13, 22, 24. So you only spent 24 out of 27. So um, if you want to keep this pretty similar, just lower your wisdom to 16, which still get, get, gives you a plus 3 bonus to wisdom, so you're not losing anything. All right, hold a second here. It keeps on rolling when I... I had a hard time with this last... Oh, there it goes. All right. Yeah. So with those scores, you've spent 24 out of your 27 points, so you actually have 3 more points to spend somewhere. But you can't you can't raise your wisdom any higher. That's as high as your wisdom will go. Okay. You know what I mean? Like because you're maxed out at fifteen. Right. So if you wanted to raise your con That's probably good. Because it's actually it's actually your con is actually twelve. You know what I mean? You know, uh, before you're applying modifiers. So if you wanted to raise it to fourteen to give yourself a sixteen Going from 12 to 14 is exactly three points. Because, you know what I mean? So if I do 16... Oops. Plus 78, sweet. Heck, it's going on. It doesn't... It gives you, like, a second to type it in, and then it, like... Okay. Wait, all right, 16? Yeah, so that would be a 27-point buy right there. If that's what you're cool with. Like, you know, I would... You know, con would be a good one to put it in. Um, and so would strength... You know, so with charisma for for yeah. a cleric, you know, it's all up to you. Like if you wanted to, most raise, of the spells work run on charisma, right? For a cleric, or is that in, in? No, 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 that's charisma. I think it's actually a lot of like your special abilities for cleric, like your um, mm -hmm. divine, uh, your what do you call it, channel divinity and stuff like that. Your ability to turn undead, that kind of right. stuff. Um, wisdom yeah. is obviously your most important, and you you put the right score in there. But you know, just kind of, I would picture kind of how, how your character is. Is it a person who is, you know, willing to stand at the front lines and take a beating, or is he more um, offensive? You know, is he more like a, a beat down sort of guy? In which case, I would choose either strength or con. Yeah, I think that's that makes sense. I think that's good where it's at. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. So now your maximum hit point should change because you get maximum hit points with your die plus your constitution bonus. So you should have eleven total. That's another thing which I'm not really sure why they don't auto calculate. That should just be automatic. Oh yeah. It doesn't. I didn't look at that. So that should be eleven. Um, and then you can see your wisdom saving throw is pretty awesome now. So is oh, your yeah. con. Uh, perception is good, and now. You got your four skills, and you, you took the ones from your background, right? Acolyte, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And um, I chose. I don't think dwarf gives you anything, right? Any skills? Or... I don't think so, no. It gives you dwarven resilience. Right. Combat training. And a tool provision. Okay, yeah, so. You, um. I, th I picked, uh, medicine and, um. Uh, religion. Okay, cool. So, it looks like, um. All this stuff is on your abilities. Like, they pulled all the right stuff, but some of that stuff you still have to make choices about. Like, your languages, I guess. Yeah, you got those from Acolyte. So you can see where yeah. under language is common dwarf, which is what you get for being a dwarf, and then you have two of your choice for being an Acolyte. Um, we actually had the discussion with Mike last night because he was asking, well, what languages would be good for Season 3? And because it's like Rage of Demons, I said Abyssal. And he's like, is that legal? And I said, I think it is, you know. But it, um, but then I looked it up in the PHP, and it's actually not because it's 
the exotic languages of which abyssal is one of them is subject to dm approval and because you're not subject to the whims of one dm only it automatically defaults to to just the standard languages okay you understand what i'm saying yeah so uh as far as those choices go there is um if you click in reference manual and creating a character and then personality and background and you go down under languages there is a list of standard languages but there's not that many I can just type them out real quick because you already you already have two of them elvish giant gnomish goblin halfling and orc those are your choices What what gives me another language? The acolyte background gives you a choice. Of oh, children. got it. Yep. Oh, so you you gain an extra because okay. But you have those those choices, the ones I wrote in, in chat there. Oh, it's giant. No, it's gone. Half of work. No, it's just a crapshoot. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's you know well, it could you know it could come in handy. I tend to pick the ones that are um, sort of like you will probably be enemies because it usually That's what comes, I was yeah it usually comes in handy like whenever you're listening at a door or something like that you know. Right, I happened. In to, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it happened a couple of times for me in the at Gen Con where that came in handy with some of my characters. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. That was my instinct. Alright, so. Where are you, languages? Abilities. Wait, I get two more? Two of your choice, yeah. Act like gives you two. And do you know how to edit, like, manually? You, you, that little brown button in the lower right hand corner? With a slash through it, you can yeah yeah, and then you can add. You'll see it do its thing. Oh. Oh. I'll see. Excellent. I don't see. Oh, I was going to go order the gauntlet for faction. Yeah, that's cool. Put that in there. I have a no brainer. I do. They do shot number and all that jazz. Probably, right? You would you would know if you got a DCI number. Do you remember asking? Yeah, I just gonna I'm gonna pull it up. Let me see here. What? How'd you get that? Did you ask Wizards? Oh, yeah, I just found the website on the website. Nice. Um, I was trying to pull up my old one, but it wouldn't. I had, I wouldn't find. It. I had like a wallet card. Yeah, I used to have that too. If you haven't. If you have an old one, there is. It's what I did because I've had one for ages, you know. Um, but I forgot it, and there is actually like a separate um, portal for asking wizards to retrieve your old uh, number. Okay, I look for it. I couldn't figure it out. It's not a big deal. As long as they gave, gave you a new one, no big deal. Yeah, they gave me one. It wasn't worth. I mean, no big deal. Right now, I'm trying to do a copy paste, and I'm struggling here because I can't. Yeah, Command C for the Mac and then Control C for, for PC. Yeah, I just can't like I can't close. I can't close my screen from um, Fantasy Grounds. It's like take down the whole screen and there's no little button. To minimize it. Can you just drag the the window frame like in the lower right hand corner? Just make it smaller. No, it's like out of the reach of the cursor. 
weird. But I can still get into my Dropbox from my toolbar, so. That's right, yeah. Are you on your desktop or are you on a laptop? I'm on my desktop. I never picked JD. Yeah, so you know where those are? They're actually in the player's handbook. Um, you have I can hear your hard copy there. You're in the appendices, Gods of the Multiverse. They have a list of all the D and D pantheons, and you want to go to the Forgotten Realms one. In in the are you looking in the library in the program? It's in the program, but if you have your hard copy of the book, you can look there too. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Appendix B. <laughs> now the thing is, is that is it at first level that you get to choose your domain, or is that, is that a second level thing? I thought it was first level. I have to check. I thought it was first level. Because that's important when you're determining your. Well, I was gonna. I already was thinking life domain made sense. Yeah, okay, so that's what I'm talking about. So, like, if you're... Um, let's see. Divine Domain. Yeah, first level. So, um, now, why isn't... Uh, you said Forgotten Room. Yeah. Oh, I see suggested domains. Okay, that narrows it down. Um Yeah, when I when I like uh, last year when I was playing online with a group, um we went through Lost Minds of Fandelver and I actually had a cleric of life and he wor he worshiped Ilmater. Um they call him the god of endurance, but like throughout the years, through all the '80s and '90s and 2000s, he was he was Ilmater, the god of suffering. Um, but it's sort of like uh, you know, righteous suffering, not 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 inflicting suffering on others. You know, right? Um, he was kind of he's kind of cool. Uh, all... Lathander is um is pretty awesome too, god of birth and renewal. He's like the, he's like the sun god, and then Shantae That's is cool. is more. She's like the mother, like Mother Earth, sort of, um, you know, hearth and home, sort of, uh, of deity. I mean, she's like the one that you would have, like your your average everyday cleric, the one who would like live in villages and just like perform everyday blessings and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that, that that's you know, she's like the most common, like her her clergy is like the most common, like the most well received, like everyone's happy to see a, a cleric of Shantae walk in, you know. Um, Got it. Uh, is there any other life? Lyra, goddess of joy, yeah. Lyra is more like a, um, like it, it would be, it'd be an interesting way for you to, 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 to take it because I, you know, there'd be so few dwarves that would worship Lyra. She's more of like a, a hippie, you know, more, more, you know, more of like an elf, uh, more elves would probably worship her, but, hmm. um, uh, and then there's actually, do they have the, uh, not the world gods, but the race gods in here? Because that would be cool. Because there's a whole bunch of um. Here we go. Yeah. If you if you continue down in there, the non-human deities. There should be dwarf gods, and they are super awesome. Where are they? Celtic. Where the heck is it? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in that same appendix, if you keep going, um, non-human deities. They have a few um, dwarf ones. I mean, I could name them off the top of my head because that's how steeped I am in all this crap. Um, Morden is the is the head god, the dwarf god of creation. But his 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 knowledge, his domain is knowledge. I don't know if they have a life one for dwarves. Mm. 
They would technically, uh, but the, this list is kind of um, a little bit limited. Yeah, they don't have too much. I think they've, are, you looking, only... are you looking in the book or are you looking in mine? I'm looking on the program, which is the book. You know? oh, okay. Yeah. Do you see where I'm looking? Yeah, I just don't know how to parse whether or not they're, they're a dwarf god or not. Well, it says it on the left. Like, you know, the first one says Bahama, dragon god of good, Blibdupulp, Kuatoa goddess. Um, under non human deities. That's the table I'm looking at. Okay, it's like different. I think it looks different in the book. I'm going to look in the book and then guide. Um... Yeah, there's really not much. They're, they're only giving you more than. Okay. Um, but you can you can change all that. You know, I was telling um I don't even know. If... Hi, Jonathan. Hey, what's up? Oh, he said he, he can't hear you. That's right, you can't hear him. He said he was. Uh... I heard her. Oh, say hi, Jonathan. <laughs> you want me to play with me? No, it's okay. I got someone's birthday present today. Ooh, he got someone's birthday present today. He said. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, so I'm thinking this guy is going to be like kind of a badass for a dwarf, like mm -hmm. a cleric. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously for a dwarf, but I mean, um, so let me flip back here. What should be a good choice for that? There's Helm, the God of Protection. He has, he has life. Um, Ooh, I like that. He's a cool God. He's a big god of paladins, actually, even though he's lawful neutral. The whole idea of protection and guard appeals mm -hmm. to them, you know. Um, that's a good one to have. It's kind of... Um, I was thinking paladin-esque in, in the character of this. Uh -huh. And don't forget, too, if you're thinking paladin, too, you're always allowed to multi-class. You know, a cleric paladin is one of the classic multi-class combos, you know. Yeah. Um. And also, don't forget that all of these choices you're making, you can totally change at will between adventures um, until you reach level five. So oh, that's for, good. For levels one to four, you can change anything you want without penalty, except for two things. You can't change your name, um, and you can't change your equipment. Um, the name's not a okay. big deal, but the equipment is kind of a, can be a big deal because right now you're saddled with scale mail, and if you suddenly feel the urge to be a wizard... Um, you know, it's pretty useless to you, you know. That's true. So okay. if, you, if you decide to switch classes or switch races, you don't get any equipment that comes with the switch. You, you're you stuck with what you originally chose. Okay. But other than that, like if, if you're if you feeling like doing Helm and you're realizing that Helm isn't exactly what you're looking for and you'd rather do Lathander, you could just switch that. You could just do it. You know what I mean? You, the only rule is that you can't do it in the middle of a session. You just have to wait till in between adventures. Right. And then once you're level five, you're locked in. Like, you're, there's no more changes after that. Okay. But I thought that, that was kind good. of a cool ruling because it really helps, like, new players who are just kind of unsure and, you know, don't really know yeah, what they totally. want. And don't, don't know how the class plays. You know, like, it sounded cool at first, and then they realized it kind of not their speed, you know. Right. Cool. I got to read up on the multi-classing thing because I've, I've never had a character that... I never use that. That's pretty cool. It's very well done in this edition. It's super easy too. Like the rules used to go on forever in some of the past editions, but this edition it's it's super easy to do. And it's never like yeah. a bad choice. It's never like you're being like suboptimal by doing it. It's purely if you just feel role playing wise that it would be a natural fit for your character to take on a level of a different class, you just do it, you know. Right. Not, not a big deal. You just the the yeah. downside is is that you sacrifice uh uh, a level in your normal class and so you don't get the benefits you know like a, like for a cleric for instance like if you decided to go paladin you wouldn't gain your next level of, mm -hmm. of spell casting and all that kind of stuff you'd always kind of be behind a little bit you know but right but you'd have all the cool paladin stuff so you know cool okay why is Kanto showing up on my sheet now that's me I just I have my player version open so I can see what players see okay and that's that's one of my characters, just so I can see. All right, so I had a question now. If I okay, so if you click, sorry, if you click on Cantos, you can't you can't see his character sheet, right? 
Correct. All right, okay. Sorry, go ahead. What were you going to say? Okay. Um, so as long as I... Um, so if you save me the file for Davin, um, I should uh, theoretically be able to imp import it, or do I have to no. do another D? No. I, I thought that that would be the case. I tested it out with Mike's character after he left last night, mm -hmm. and it doesn't work. Um, because you have the free demo only, um, you are not allowed to Im you're not allowed to import from your end. But the good thing is is that any well, it's not really a good thing. But the silver lining of it is is that if you create a character on my server, which is what you're doing right now, mm -hmm. um, it saves everything on my server. So your character is here with me, right. basically. Um, and, and, but the only way that you're going to be able to see your character is if you're on my server. If you're, if you're, if I'm online, then you're linked up. Um, unless you pay for the standard version, okay. you know, the forty dollar one. Um, okay. So, so and, you know, so you don't have to do that. This is why I've been saying, um, you know, take a look at your character when uh, when you're online, like now, and transfer all that shit to a um, to a hard copy paper sheet. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then it's update both. Right. right. Um. Every any time there's a change, you know, that's what I do with my characters, anyways. Um, yeah, I was looking at uh, last week when I, I think I emailed you, or texted you. I was looking at the site, Fantasy Ground site, and I was a little bit unclear about the different types of packages they had and what exactly. Yeah, it's complicated. It, yeah, it looked like there is. Like you can get a license and add something on, or else you can get a standard, or you can get a player. There's different names for what seem to be yeah, very they, similar. It's it's packages. actually pretty it's actually pretty simple, they, but they don't organize it in a way that makes it easy to understand. So okay. there's basically three versions. There's the free one, which you have. Okay. There's the standard license, which is forty dollars. The standard license allows you to host games or play in games um, with other people who have either a another standard license or the ultimate license okay? okay and then and then there's the ultimate license if you have the ultimate license you can host games and anyone can play on your server if whether or not they have the standard or the free the free demo which is what i have which is what is allowing you to play with me right now right and access okay. all this material that one's really expensive that one's like 140. yes um, and then in addition to what if you if you buy the standard license or the ultimate license, you can also pay for these packages. You know, you can pay for, like I paid for the player's handbook, which you're looking at now, you know, um, right. or the monster manual or the class packs or the token packs or the battle maps or the adventures or whatever. You know what I mean? There's tons of stuff. They have a whole store dedicated to things that you can add on to your, your fantasy grounds, you know. Um, but yeah. the, three, the three basic things that allow you to actually run fantasy grounds are the free demo, the standard forty dollar license or the hundred and forty dollar ultimate license, um, and that's basically how it works. And um, then there's and then in between that, like there's different prices for like if you have the free demo, it costs you I think one hundred and forty to upgrade from a free all the way to an ultimate, skipping standard. But if you already paid for the standard and you're just upgrading to the ultimate, like from standard to ultimate, I think it only costs you one hundred and ten because you already paid forty for the standard. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I don't right. know. I don't know if I made that more difficult to understand or or less, but but um, that's basically the pricing, the, the way the pricing works. But I mean, I, I think forty dollars. If if all you're looking for is just to save your character offline, I think forty dollars is too much. You know. Right, but the pit, but the play with other folks. That's what you need. The, the play, yeah, but uh, but if you go onto the 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 online tools sign up site, like the main site where you're going to find all the games that you're going to play. Mm -hmm. You'll see because they have to list every DM who have you looked have you gone on that site yet? Yeah, I have. You've seen that like where they list the dungeon master and they tell you they tell you what kind of virtual tabletop they're going to use. Yeah, and, and if they're if they're using Fantasy Grounds, they have to tell you what kind of license they have. And the vast majority of them are Ultimate users. Oh, so you can so you, you so you can send me a file of my guy and I can and and I can and, and he can someone else can import it. Yes, that's that's right. So. If you're playing with a stranger DM, I can email mm -hmm. you the XML file. You send mm -hmm. your DM the XML file before his game starts. Got it. And he'll load it onto his server, 
and give yeah. you the permissions. And then when you log on to his server, it'll be there as a choice to take. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? But the key right. thing, the key thing to do though, it, well, it's not a big deal if you forget to do it, but the key thing to do is after the session is over and you receive rewards and your character changes or upgrades or whatever like that, you need to make the changes before you log right off then. with him, you know, so that he can save the character. Um, right. So like any XP or anything like that. Would... Yes, exactly. Now it's not a big deal if, 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 you know, everyone just gets off a line the moment the adventure is over, because then you can just make the changes on your paper character sheet, get online with me, you know what I mean? And then just make the changes mm -hmm. yourself. It's not a big deal. But, um, um, that was something I had to realize happened with people with the free download because when I play, when I'm the player, you know, not a, not a doesn't DM, matter. it doesn't matter because I have the ultimate license and so right. I have all the time in the world to change my guy whenever I feel like it. Okay, so as long as I'm running the free demo, I need to make sure they have the ultimate license. Yes. But I'm telling you 95% of the time they do. Right. So you'll never and have so to worry I, about it. You know? And if I needed to level up, I would want to either do that on paper and then... <laughs> when I log on, kind of make the changes real quick. Right. Or or ideally, you would make the changes after the game is over. Um, the DM would save it, and then he would send it to you. Ideally, yes. Yeah. So I, I, I should probably think ahead about what I want to do when I'm going to be leveling up. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, now, this is another question I had, which is related. If there's a game I want to play in Roll20, uh -huh. it's, it's a similar scenario, right? Yeah, that's, so because yeah. I don't, I can't save a character on Roll Twenty, and this is on someone else's license. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, no, it's right. different. With Roll Twenty, um, I have to be in someone's game that has it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it has to they be in to their create. journal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, unless you pay, there's a subscription service for Roll Twenty, which allows you to access all of your stuff. Um, the char character offline. role thing. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of a similar thing. Basically, yeah. Because I couldn't take my, my character with me unless I had that character vault thing. Right. And that's once again why a hard copy of an old school character sheet is the best thing to have. You know what I mean? Because then you can just right. use the hard copy to look both to use both at Roll Twenty and on Fantasy Grounds, you know. Right. Got it. All right. So right now I'm looking to make sure <laughs> to make sure I have everything copied over, but it looks like I do. No, I don't know if there's. There where might would be you a, show? What? I'm sorry. Where would you show the stealth disadvantage because of the armor? On, on, a, on your character sheet. On a paper character sheet? Yeah. There is no there's no way to do it. I what do I do on mine? I think I just put a Oh, you know what I do is I write I write dis in parentheses right next to the modifier. Just okay. re just reminds me. Alright, got it. This this and that. Yeah. Good. I write dis and add A D for on my character sheet whenever I want to abbreviate advantage and disadvantage. And then, okay, good, that's covered. And then I have Warhammer and Light Crossbow. I can have both of those, I, I think. Now, are you using the standard equipment packages instead of... Yeah. Okay, yeah. That was all dwarf stuff. Um, it should be all cleric stuff, I think. <laughs> You should have stuff and, from dwarf. I mean, from from cleric, and you should have stuff from acolyte. Right, like my piece, my my priest uh, pack, and all that was acolyte. Yeah. You see, wasn't it cool? Did you pull priest pack into your equipment, and then you can see how it opens it, everything up, and you can see. Oh, that was across. awesome. Yeah, yeah, I thought so that was really kinda, cool. Yeah, you can kind of explode it right into there. Yeah, it looks like you did it right. I see it here. You got your fifteen GP from acolyte and everything, so it looks good. Um, yeah, and then uh, I think we went over this last time. And then actions, it automatically pulls your weapons. Um, we did this right with like the map and everything. We kind of tested out the targeting and all that kind of good stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it automatically calculates your bonuses and blah blah blah. It looks good. Um, you probably. I wanna... couldn't find. A, I couldn't find a prayer book, so I just threw a book in there. Yeah, you figured out how to add your own stuff, right? Yeah, I just did, I was using the search feature in there. That was handy. 
Yeah, that's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. But there's for, a couple like, things I couldn't find. I, I glazed, I glossed over. Like I was looking for investments, but it was I was looking under D instead of clothes. Right. And the search popped right up. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Well, some of the a lot of the backgrounds have like weird one-off equipment things, like um, mm-hmm. you know, and the, and you just you just gotta make it up. Like you can't pull it from anywhere, you know. Right. Um, right. Yeah, everything looks good. I th- you even got your traits and bonds and all that kind of good stuff. Um, uh, don't forget too that um, actually, you probably might not even be aware, but there are uh, there are special, um, unique backgrounds and bonds that are available to characters who are created using season three rules. Um, like you know that are that are unique to like the area where this stuff takes place. Um, and your images and maps, the moon sea thing should still be there. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, and Hillsfar is where season three takes place, and there is—I don't think they're in the player's guide, but there are special. Um, can I do this? You know what? You know what I'll do is I'll drop this into uh, Dropbox and get you the link for you. There's cool character options that, like you know, like are, are, are actually like legal backgrounds for you to have that are instead of like very general, like acolyte, are actually like. Um, Super specific to the actual plot of oh, okay. of the hills far thing, you know what I mean? You could, you know, acolytes of a fine background is no problem at all, but you could just take a look to kind of get an idea of what like other backgrounds might look like. Uh, let me uh, just uh, quick put this in Dropbox. Paste. I don't do this that often, so uh, hills far regional options. Share Dropbox link. It's been copied to my clipboard, so I should be able to paste it. Voila. So that should do it for you, I think. Awesome. Um, I think there's like uh, bonds in there too. You know, just kind of tie. You know, they don't really have much of an effect, but they just kind of tie you into the plot more. Like I took um, Kantos has one because I, I built him with season three. Come here, Kantos. Where are you? Did you already share the link? It should be in chat. Oh, in the chat link there is. Right. Yep. Now I got it. Yeah. Yeah, Kantos took Corman Thor refugee. And Corman Thor is the large force to the south of Hillsfar, which used to be a um, a powerful elven kingdom. Okay. But when their capital, Myth Draenor, was taken over by demons, the elves basically had to flee and became refugees. Um, and so Kantos is one of those. Uh, so it just kind of makes them, it helps bind them to the world a little bit better, you know? Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, it's cool. And it gives you like a you know it gives you a couple of mechanical benefits like it changes like what he got for his skill choices and uh, the inventory. I do have yeah, to figure out how to like actually add like a link, like that that nice link in chat. Yeah, there should be a way. Remember how you were looking at the story entry and it had the. I think you still have it. Yeah, you still have it. It, it has the link written out, but we couldn't actually copy and paste it or link. You know, there's got to be a way to like link. Uh, but I don't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. Whatevs. Yeah, that's cool. I'll, I'll take a look at this and see if they... Yeah, you don't have to read it now. Hmm. Cool. I think I'm in pretty good shape. Yeah, so now your big thing, of course, is your divine domain and um, your spells and stuff like that, you know? Right. So. Right. There's no spell book in here, is there? Yeah. What do you mean? 
the spells they're all they're all there in fantasy grounds yeah yeah man they're all there um let's see here you have uh Dovine Domain where is it if you go into the PHB spell should be the last thing on the list oh, okay but do you have like um let's see here do you have a place on any of your sheets to show it oh yeah so if you go on actions okay if you just if you, you see like the nice scroll work border at the bottom of your weapons um, you know it just like the little break you know goes crossbow warhammer and then below it is like a like a scroll work bar No, where am I looking? Actions tab. Oh. All right. Yeah, scroll work thing. Yeah. Okay, so if you find the red dragon icon link for a certain spell, drag it in below that bar, and it should auto-populate yeah. your spell with all of oh. the cool features. You're going to love this because this is what makes it clear. Go clear, you know, these spells. So, <clears throat> you know, like, for instance, you're definitely going to have cure wounds. So open up spells search for cure wounds and drag it into your character sheet boom yeah so you, now you can see that um for the vast majority of spells they've got all the cool stuff already um if, if it's rollable it'll have the kind of roll already set so you can see that it, it heals 1d8 and so you can actually drag that red cross icon yeah. on, uh, much like in a similar way that you can drag your d20 icon from warhammer onto yeah. a target, you can drag that heal icon onto a target as well, and it'll heal them that amount of hit points. Um, and it's really cool because it will actually heal in the hit points. It doesn't just roll like a generic die, and then the player has to like add the hit points themselves. It will actually add the hit points to the person. You know what That's I mean? That's cool. It's, now, really, it's really cool, you know? What about things like... If you do blast, does that automatically calculate for your targets? And no. then you have to. No. That's, that's too complicated. You have to pick like three targets. Exactly. Or... Yeah. Like there, there are probably ways to build that through the code, and some some users have been able to do that. But you know, like bless gives you one d four to an attack rolls and saving throws. You know, um, so it's not that complicated. It probably could be doable, but uh, you know, you just you just you just say you're casting bless, and then and then people will do it manually. You know, but it makes like it just makes like damage spells a lot easier because, um, you know, like uh, Sacred Flame is another one that you're probably going to want to take for like a cantrip. Uh, I think it deals like one d ten, but it forces the it doesn't make an attack roll. It actually forces the 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 target to make a saving throw. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna attack. Looking at that right now, cleric life to any spells. So that's just very specific. I need to look at regular spells. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You need to look at just regular spells. All right. I'm going to have to dig around for my. So, how many. I got to look at the, the book. I don't know how many cantrips to get it. So, Super. yeah. I can, I can show you here. So, at first level, okay, you get three cantrips and two first level spells. All right. right that, okay. that, that you know. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Hold on. That's spell slots. Never mind. Hold on one second. I got it. That's wrong. That's wrong. All right. Yeah. So you know three cantrips. And then first level. You know. For first level spells, you know um, an amount equal to your wisdom modifier plus your cleric level. So your wisdom is plus three and your level is one. So you know four first level spells. Got it. So okay. I got two already. Now, does that count for your life domain spells? No, that's what's cool. Those are, so, those are additional. Yeah, and those are always considered to be uh, prepared. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? So they're always there. That's great. Oh crap! Now I gotta look. <laughs> I gotta figure out these. 
I already have cure wounds, so that's covered. I already have less. Alright. I might um my cheesies later to spare you the uh, Yeah, it's fine. But cure, wound, cure wounds and bless are your two domain spells that you get, right? Um Is that is that the life domain? Sorry. Yep. So, the, the, that's yeah, those yeah. are the two. So those are just kind of gimmies. Right. So you never have to prep them at the beginning after a long rest. They're always kind of there for you, you know. And then um and then in addition to that, you need to pick three cantrips and four first level spells. Okay? Yep. But okay. you but you are li but your slots, which is your ability to cast spells. Okay. Is limited, um, and that is uh, that is. I'm looking at the chart here. Three, so you can you have three cantrip. You, well, you can cast you can cast cantrips all day long. Cantrips don't cost slots. They're like the at right. will the at will powers, right? You just kind of right. cast them whenever you want. First level is the ones where you have to keep track of. You only have two spell slots for first level, and your domain spells do count against that. You know, so right. you, all, you always have bless and cure wounds cure wounds prepared in addition to your four other ones that you're going to choose you have so you're going to have six total first level spells that are prepared and available to you but you only have two slots so you can only cast two of them right before you have to uh rest you know what I mean? that's the way it works that's why you gotta level up that's right um but it's nice because the cantrips are actually pretty decent spells. Like you're going to be casting cantrips left and right because you don't have to worry about resource management with them. You can just cast them whenever. You know what I mean? First levels are yeah. sort of like your are sort of like your big guns. You know what I mean? They're the ones that uh, right. Yeah. So you chose sacred flame. So you can see that this is more of like a, an offensive spell, but it's a it's a really cool offensive spell, which it, it's one of the best spells in the game, I think, because it doesn't make you make an attack roll. It just forces the opponent to make a save. Right. You know what I mean? And um, a lot of times for dopey monsters, dex is like their weakest ability. Um, so, but what's cool about the game, about Fantasy Grounds, is that you can take that d20 for the save and you drag it onto your intended target and it actually makes the target roll the save. And, it, and then it will determine whether or not the save was just successful or unsuccessful, at which point you can then drag the damage icon, 1d8 radiant, onto that same creature, and it will apply the damage. Now, what's what's also cool is is that because it's radiant damage, if you drag it onto, like, for instance, something that is vulnerable to radiant, da radiant damage, like an undead, like zombies or skeletons, right? Mm -hmm. um, it will automatically... Uh, I think it. I think vulnerable means it doubles the damage. So it would automatically roll like 2d8, or it would double the... I can't remember what it is, if it doubles the, the result or the die roll, but whatever. Um, it automatically grants the bonus of, of the creature being vulnerable to Radiant, you know? Right. Which is super dope. It's the same thing for, like, um, your Warhammer being bludgeoning. You know, if a creature is resistant to bludgeoning or is vulnerable to bludgeoning, it automatically takes that into account when you drag that damage onto that creature. That's you know? good. It's pretty awesome. That's the kind of thing that that Fantasy Grounds can do that Roll20 can't. You know, that, that's one of the, th you know, I love Roll20, I do, and it has a lot of advantages over Fantasy Grounds, but this is one of the ones that Fantasy Grounds actually has the upper hand, you know. Yeah. It just automates that stuff, and you never have, have to you, think about it, you know. Have you used the newer the newer sheets in that, in uh, Roll20? The newer sheets? I'm not sure. Like the, uh, what do they call them, shaped or whatever, shaped sheets? I'm not sure, I don't think so. You should take a look at that, because they, uh, they they have more like a little more functionality now. Like they can do oh, a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, like it, it, it. So like I'm doing a a four paladin. So he's got some similar kind of spells as the cleric. Um, and it doesn't automatically calculate stuff, but like it uh, it seems a little bit quicker to to, to roll things and to, to do saves and such. Oh, cool. So I don't know if that's something. See, I never look at it on the GM side. I don't know if that's you have to import a different kind of sheet or I don't know how that works. Probably does, but that's cool. That's awesome. 
that means like the programs are like learning from each other to try to best each other, which only benefits everybody else. It only benefits the consumer, you know what I mean? Which is great. Right, right. So Sacred Flame is one that automatically you still have to hit, you have to still have to cast it on you would you cast it like on fantasy grounds, like you'd take the little like that. I just did it. Yeah. Right. So you can say like it says Davin Diamond Death cast Sacred Flame, but that doesn't do anything. But then yeah. when you do the save, it forces the save, you know what I mean? But you actually have to drag, it, it, you know, you have to take the die and actually drag it onto... Uh, on your target, yeah. Yeah, like, you know what I'll do? Uh, you won't be able to do it, but I think I can do it if I drag it onto Kantos. Let's see what happens here. I tried it <laughs> to, to see. It didn't work. Let's see what happens here. There, see? It works because I'm the GM. I have this, you know. So yeah. I, I dragged from your character sheet onto Kantos, and it automatically forces Kantos to make the save. He's got an excellent dexterity. As you can see, he has a plus five there, so he made the save easily. But you can see how it works. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, but I can't see it. Should it show up in the chat? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I see the question mark. Yeah, it's silent because I'm the GM. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me see got if it. it uh, let me see if I can drag that result. There. How about that? It is. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, I'm a little worried about the... Not worried, but less first and getting my way around in here. Although I think I... I understand where everything is now, but like I haven't played in it. Like I played yeah. a game. It yeah, seriously. It doesn't... It only takes a couple of times. Like, I was super nervous the first time I jumped in and I warned everybody. I was like, this is my first time playing, you know? First of all, everyone's super cool about it. They're not going to care. And everyone's always willing to help. Um, yeah. but you get, you get used to it. It just becomes supernatural, you know? Yeah. Supernatural. Um, very natural after a while. Um, what's nice is, what's nice is you basically all you need open on the player's side is your character sheet and, um, mm -hmm. the combat tracker if you're in combat, right? Okay. Because if you have any questions about what your character can do, almost all of them are hyperlinked to the entries in the PHB, you know? So you don't need to have the PHP right. open to the spells list because every spell that you have is actually hyperlinked and you can just click on it and see what it does, you know? Yeah. So it's it's really nice, you know? That's cool. All right. I'm much more nervous about being able to run a game. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I've, yeah. I've got to prep the adventure like normal and then I've got to be able to fluidly manage all these windows and people and all that kind of stuff and I know it's going to go shitty the first time but I'm just going to warn people when I put up my first game, my first game you know yeah and people well, people will be forgiving too because there's such a, like a dearth of DMs versus players you know like the, and everyone will just be happy to have another DM willing to do it you know so like how many are out there well if you go on by that online site tool it looks like not a lot not too many like maybe 10 Wow. Um, that are on that site, you know. Like, if I, I also go on to Twitch and just... I follow Dungeons... Like, whenever a Dungeons & Dragons game is being played on Twitch, mm -hmm. you know, it shows up. And there's always, like, a ton of games being played, but... Well, I of, looked... Hmm? I looked on there. I looked on there, after, uh, like, two or three times since we talked last time, and I clicked on some games, and I, re I, I already recognized... And this is like days later. I'm like, I recognize me. Like, oh, that's the same guy from that last. And it was a different. Yeah, there you go. Guy. Yeah. Um, uh, dude with the glasses and a beard, GM. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if he was on, but I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. Well, for whatever whatever reason, it seems like on Twitch, most of the games being played are Roll Twenty. But mm. then again, most of the games on Twitch are also not Adventurers League games. Um, I've found that if you go on to the online tool sign up, that most of those guys are playing on Fantasy Grounds and they have to broadcast, not on Twitch, but they do have to broadcast, which is almost always on Twitch, playing on Fantasy Grounds. So like, if you're looking at the list on Twitch of people playing Dungeons & Dragons, if you see someone playing on Fantasy Grounds, chances are they're playing an, an actual Adventurers League game um, mm -hmm. is what that kind of equates to. So um, I tend to watch those just to see how the DM is managing his windows and all that kind of stuff and what he's doing and all that kind of good stuff. That's cool. Yeah. 
um, the guy I've played with a lot, um, who broadcasts a lot, he broadcasts at least every Wednesday and Saturday, is a guy called, um, well, his real name's Chris, but his uh, channel is called uh, this, FSH Schmo. So it's like, I think it's, um, and he's like a super nice guy. I love playing with him. Um, he's from like uh, the panhandle of Florida. Uh, <laughs> Twitch. TV slash Schmo. Yeah, if you go to that guy's channel, um, um, he lists a lot of games. His name's Chris. His name's Chris Jernigan, um, mm -hmm. and you'll see him listed all over the main sign-up site. Um, he he knows what he's doing. Um, I recognize. Okay, yeah, I recognize his Cartman Wizard and his yeah. name. Yeah, he's like a really good guy. He's like super patient, has a great DMing style. He doesn't waste time. Like he, he understands like the pacing of AL games kind of have to move a little bit more quickly than a, an average home game. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So he, he's good at keeping up the pace and um, he understands the rules and he's very good at fantasy grounds. Like he's a master, not a, well, you know, he's, he's very good at fantasy grounds. He knows how to manipulate things and stuff. So if you, if you can manage to catch one of his games when he's on, yeah, you could watch it, and he also actually does a lot of like what I'm doing right now, which is broadcasting on Twitch, but just doing sort of like planning and tutorial sort of stuff. So he'll actually like run tutorial sessions where he is like building an adventure, like he's actually like taking like an expeditions adventure that he has on PDF and translating it into Fantasy Grounds, which is what mm -hmm. I'm doing as well. Like that, like that map I showed you last time mm -hmm. of the of the of the city gate. You know, that was me building out from an actual PDF of the adventure to put it into Fantasy Grounds, you know. And he'll right. do he'll do a whole session of just him, no players or anything like that, just building stuff. And he'll talk you through how he does it and all that kind of stuff. So, um, And even if you're only a player, it's a good way just to familiarize yourself with, like, the capabilities of Fantasy Grounds, you know. So much better mm -hmm. to just see someone do it. And what's really cool is it's even better than watching YouTube videos of it because you can interact with him. You can be in the chat room with him and actually ask him questions like, what are you doing here and blah, blah, blah. And he's... Um, he's very patient and will answer your questions and he's great. <coughs> he's That's cool. Yeah. I might have to, I, I might try to pop in and watch some of this stuff. Before yeah. I, well, that's the other I, thing too, is like, even if you don't get into a game, even if you, if you, if you're late on the signups for one of his games, you can always show up online when he's streaming and just still talk with him. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, which is pretty awesome, you know? Um, that's awesome. Yeah. But he's, he's the guy that introduced me to playing on fancy grounds and playing with adventurers league and all that kind of stuff. Like it was through, I mean, he didn't, he didn't like mentor me or anything like that, but he was like the first guy I signed up with a game with and um, took me through it. So I would highly recommend him as one of your first GMs. Cause he's very, um, you won't feel intimidated being, being in one of his games, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm picking something like I've never played a cleric. So like I have to familiarize familiarize myself with the with the spells and everything sure but like just what you have right here mm -hmm. you're, you're golden right here you know um what i tend to do is is when you're in a role-playing situation i have the main tab clicked so i can yeah. get a good grasp of my character in general the moment right. it, the moment you go into combat like whenever chris would tell you like roll initiative mm -hmm. i switch to the actions tab yes um so that i have all of my combat options open there and then I also go up into the upper right hand corner of the entire program and I open up the combat tracker um, so that I can see whose turn it is and what the status is of the enemies and all that kind of stuff. Um, Got it. And then you're good. Like with those, you know, and then the map, the map that Chris will provide for you, um, those three things, you're, you're, that's all you need. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so all good. your, all your options are kind of like right there. You know, you can see it all. No problem. Um, and uh, with the combat tracker, as a cleric, it's easy for you to see the status of your allies' health and stuff like that too. So you'll know where to spread yourself around the battlefield to be able to heal, you know, the best way. Unless you're one of those you asshole players who doesn't heal your to heal his allies. <laughs> don't don't be that guy. <laughs> the other good thing too, man, is about you playing a cleric is that you will be appreciated in any game that you join. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Every when the clear pops in, everyone's like, "Yay!" <laughs> right. Yeah, let's. It's, yeah, and it's important. So, like in the uh, in this other game that I'm playing, it's um, 
we have two paladins, and we're kind of like the uh, the yield. Yeah, also, yeah, we're kind of like, and it's kind of cool having two paladins because there's like a lot of in jokes about um, about it, so it's kind of cool. That's cool. You guys worship the same god? No. Um, no. <laughs> what, what race are you playing? But it's like a little cl- a half work. I'm going against class. Uh-huh. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And who's the other guy? Um, I can't remember. I'm getting mixed up now on what, his, what he was. I think he's a human. This is the Lost Minds one? The guy who sends you all the random encounters all the time? Yeah, yeah. I, but I'm not even sure. Like I said, I'm, I'm confused about the story because I popped in at third or fourth level. Oh, right, third, right. I remember third you level. Now we're in fourth, I think. Yeah. yeah, and so um, I'm not even sure what the heck the story is, but it's been fun just to, you know, pound around. And, yeah, it's cool. a little bit. It's pretty heavy on the. It's, it's it's a lot of action, like a lot of. Uh, I guess you call it a hack and slash. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like it with the random encounters. Right. But having cool. having two paladins in the party is pretty cool. Yeah. You'll you'll. you'll, you'll that's one of the cool benefits, side benefits of playing in the Adventurers League too, where you're basically playing with a different party every time you sign up, is that you're going to get some crazy co- party compositions because you're, because you're not allowed to. There's no parsing of it, right? Yeah, there's no picking and choosing. You can't. You you know what I mean? Like you have you know if someone wants to play their character, they're allowed to play as long as they meet the prerequisites. You know, what I mean, there's no thought given to balance. You know, so interesting. I'm wondering that. So there's a lot of in the earlier tiers, it can be kind of frustrating because um the early tiers you're going to have a lot of beginning players players who, who've never played D before and right they naturally gravitate to playing fighters because fighters are the easiest to understand and play you know i hit it right. with my sword and that's it you know and um and so you'll get like these parties that are just like so top heavy with um offensive capabilities but with like no healing no skills <laughs> right. you know no spells you know what i mean and, and it's and you have to be really careful because <laughs> you know what i mean you, like you think you're just gonna slaughter everybody but you know you take a couple of good hits and then you're screwed you got to go back to town and heal up you know <laughs> all right all right yeah. um, but it can be kind of fun because you'll get some you'll just get some crazy parties that are top heavy with weird races and classes and stuff you know but it's fun yeah, and it's nice because you get to meet a whole bunch of new people, and then, um, and then you recognize them again when you sign up for another game, and they happen to be in there again, and you know, it's, it's cool, it's fun. Yeah, it's exciting. I wish I, I wish would have known in, in the summer that would have been a, a good summer thing for me. Yeah, totally. Yeah, but that's okay. I'll learn how to do it. And yeah, then yeah. Like I said, it'll be good during the school year too, man, because it's just you can you can squeeze it into your schedule whenever you can. And whenever you can manage it, which is what's nice, you know. Right. You just go onto that site and you can just look for the day that you're free and then sign up for whatever game is being offered on that day, you know, um, uh, without having to, like, plan the lives of five or six different people to co- coincide. With, you know what I mean? You know how it is with re- with regular home games. It's, like, yeah. super tough when you're an adult, you know. Sure. Uh, so th- this is much easier. Um yeah, sounds good. And then how uh, how often you said they come out and they're released in like sets of three, like the expeditions? Uh, yes, they uh, is it three? I think it's like three or four. Every how often? Every couple months. Like they they have two seasons a year. One starts in September. One starts in March. Okay. Uh, well, I guess the, so. The first season, you know, the first season of the year starts in March, and the second season starts in September. And then, so in that period, they release, there's 16 adventures, and I think they release, um, so they must release four at a time, you know, f- four times, four times during the season, they release four adventures. So you're looking at, like, an on average, like, a little more than one, one a month, like, if you spread it out. If you spread it out, yeah. But you can, you can play them in any order that they're available, as long as you meet the tier requirements, you know what I mean? Right. I think it would be fun to... Since a new season is coming up, and there will be lots of those games, it would be fun to try to just hop on and stay up to date. Yeah, absolutely. With it, and those will be the, those will be the most prevalent games too, because it's the new hotness. You know what I mean? So, like, um, if you go on the site now, I'm sure you probably saw that Harried and Hills Far, which is season yes. is three one, is like all over the place because it's it's readily available and it's the it's the starter adventure for season three. So, um, this is the time. You know, I deliberately. 
introduced you guys to this right after Gen Con because I knew that season three was going to be coming up. And, you know, this is like a perfect time for you to jump in right at the beginning of season where you don't have to catch up if that's what your intent was, you know. Right. Um, and it, would be, it doesn't sound too hard to stay afloat right. either. So. Right. And you don't have to limit yourself to season three. Right. So you can still keep up with season three, but if you want to pad yourself with a little bit more gold, a little more experience or whatever like that, you can just go and play a whatever season two or season one game is being offered as well, you know. Right. There's no that limit sounds- to that, you know. You're just bound by the restrictions of the player's guide that is uh, the appropriate one that you use to build your character. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So, like, right. you, you built a guy using the season three player's guide, which means that you could never, if you decide you didn't like your guy being a dwarf, you could never change him to being a Goliath because a Goliath was only available to season two characters. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so that right. that's one but of the why, that's one of the limitations. Why can't someone just choose to build the season two character at any time? Though they can, right? They can. Yeah, you could. Yeah. So Davin is basically um, limited to being a season three guy no matter what changes he makes. But you could always just build a Season 2 guy from scratch. Right. But you can't well, you can't change, change a Season 3 to be a che- the Season 2. What makes Davin Season 3? Uh, nothing, really, because you haven't chosen anything that's specific to Season 3. Right, that's what I thought. Okay. But, um, you know, that's the guy that you're actually looking at. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but, yeah, technically you could say that Davin's a Season 2 guy. You know what I mean? You should make that choice now, you know, relatively. Well, how do you, how do you delineate that? How do I... If you go into the player's guide PDF near the beginning somewhere, it'll say the it'll give you the rules for like you know what what's legal. You know what I mean? Right, right. But how do I um, not delineate? What's the word? How do I um, acknowledge that to 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 someone that is it just by word that like I'm using three character? Uh, oh, you mean like is there a blank for it? No, I don't think. Yeah, there is. yeah. Okay. I think that you just. I mean, the only way that um, I tell myself is that on my. I download the character sheet that is specific to this season mm-hmm. uh, for my hard copy one. Um, and it has like a, each season has its own special little graphic icon. Oh, okay. And it should be in the upper left hand corner of the character sheet of your hard one. Oh, okay. So it's like a little uh, trident looking. Who knows? Where the character name is? Yeah, up in the. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what the uh, season the Elemental Evil, the season two one was like a three piece. Uh, I can't remember what it looked like now. Yes, I think Rage of Demons sort of looks like an eye cross. with like like an eye with some stuff below it or something yeah, like that. Sort of like the like Eye of Mordor or something. Yeah, it's kind of like cross shaped, kind of like three D ish. Yeah, yeah, I think that's Rage of Demons. I think that's season yeah. three. Tyranny of Dragons, which was the first one, was a dragon head, obviously. Um, okay. Elemental Evil was uh, maybe like a four-part thing representing the four things of it, of elements. I don't know. I can't remember. But right. anyway, that's how I tell. Anyways, um, but like uh, season two be, uh, stood out because there was a there was a special guide that gave special options for characters from that, and um, uh, um, and it gave like a whole bunch of like new spells available, and it gave you new races to play and all this kind of stuff that were not available to season one and are not available to season three characters. So it's sort of like okay. if someone is playing like a Goliath or a Janazi or a Deep Gnome, um, you know, those are races that were only available to characters who were playing season two. Mm, I get it. So you can always play. You can you can make a season two guy and you can make a season two guy and have him play season three adventures only. Mm-hmm. You know, but he is limited to whatever the options were for season two. Got it. Okay. You, you see what I'm saying? So you you're very well you are going you're going to come across a lot of people in your parties that are going to be from season two, and it's very easy to spot because there are all these crazy races that no one else plays. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Interesting. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of freedom. Like it, you know, there's not a lot of restrictions, really. You know, which is what I kind of like about it. Like Pathfinder Society was. Um, I like it, but it's it's like very rigid, and there are a lot of like limitations of like what you can and cannot use, what sources you can use, you know. And um, yeah, the D and D one is much more kind of like uh, you know it's you know they're very kind of free flowing. They're like it's mostly honor system. You use the same basic character creation rules as the PHB, you know, um, and uh, you know they just kind of trust you to 
all kind of be in it together. Like, you know, like, you, you know, if you cheat, you're basically cheating yourself and everybody, you know, like there's no, right. real, there's no real motive to cheat, you know? So, yeah, this is, this is so cool because the, the, I would have tried, I would have done a Pathfinder Society event to try, except for the fact that it's always at noon on Saturday, which is the most, you know, the worst time for me to, right, right, family time thing. So, um, where do they hold that? I was at, at the, you know, for any local gaming stores, they have them. The, oh. the, the store where I used to play in person um, hosts them. Yeah. Now they have, I'm sure they have um, the Adventures League, Adventure League there too, but because they're popular, they're on like Saturday afternoons, you know? Yeah, that's the problem. That's the same problem I have here. There's like tons of games going on, but they're they're always on either a day I work or or the one day I have with Maria, a Saturday, you know? Yeah, so, that makes it makes sense. That's the rest of, the course, of the world. Of course, yeah, I don't blame them. It's just kind of irritating, you know? Right. Now I'm sure Pathfinder Society, they probably do, are they doing something similar yet? They probably will at some point. What do you mean something similar? To the Adventures League, like the online play? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. I haven't checked up with Pathfinder Society in a couple of years now. But for, I, one, uh, for one of my Gen Cons that I went to with the guys, that was all we did. We played Pathfinder Society and it was super fun. <laughs> you know, it yeah. was really cool. You know, we had a blast. I'm liking the... I'm liking the, the experience of, of Dungeons and Dragons here a lot more. Of Five E a lot more. So this is good. Yeah, it's definitely. I think it's a better game, frankly. I just think you know I have a lot of fun with Pathfinder, but it's just a, it's a little too crunchy. You know what I mean? There's just there's so many rules. Yeah, it's know. too much for me. It takes me forever like to create a character. And, it's you know, tough, man. Yeah, and man, you should see. You should try GMing it, man. It is it is rough. Yeah. <laughs> um, because every. NPC is has the exact same stat block as like a as a PC. You know what I mean? Right. And you know you know your PC backwards and forwards because you've you've you know like you said like you spent so much time picking the right options and knowing what he, you know how he is every 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 part of him. You know the character sheet for an NPC it looks exactly the same way. But wow. I obviously you obviously are not as invested in it as a GM. <laughs> you know what I mean, like he's only going right. to be—he's only going to be on screen for like maybe a half an hour while he's fighting you guys, you know. But you have to parse like this huge list of spells and abilities that he has, and you know, and feats. Right. And, oh my god, it's a nightmare. <laughs> nice. But with D and D, it's it's simple. You have a very simple stat block, and you're ready to go. Boom, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. All right, I think I'm ready to go. All right. Well, so, don't they don't have to. I mean, I don't know if you're gonna have this stuff. Uh, I'll look at my spells. I mean, if I need to, you probably it wouldn't be a big deal for you to email this file out whenever. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he's you know, you haven't chosen all your spells and everything yet. Like he's not done. He's almost done. Right. Right. But, so, um, that's what I was gonna say is, uh, don't worry about sending it over, and I'll take a look at that. And if I catch you on here again, I can update that. Yeah, I'll still I'll still continue to have the the thing up nightly so you can finish yeah. them off what i'll do now is i'll save the xml file give them to you as is right now and then okay. um you know uh uh you know and if you want to give that to a dm like if you decide to sign up for something in the meantime before the character's finished you can give it to your dm and then finish it with him right okay um but what you can also do too is because i'll leave it up nightly um uh, what you can do is is you can finish your character online like basically, basically all you have to do is um, do your spells, and if you want to write down something for like your appearance or something like that, you know, just flesh them out or whatever. You can do that. Like once your character's done, my point is, is like once your character's done yeah. in chat on that night that you finish your character, just say John, he's done. Save my character and send it to me. You know what I mean? And then when would I come, be, hmm? would it be easier if I just let you know what my spe what, what spells I would like? That way you don't have to. I mean, is it a problem for you? To to add them? Yeah. Oh, would that be easier than uh, trying to... Um, I don't... I mean, if you're going to throw this up for other people every night, but I don't want you to throw it up there. No, it's not just night. it's not just for you. Okay. You know, I mean, you know, you know, you know I'm going to... I'll stop doing this once everybody finally has a <laughs> chance to get on here. Okay. <clears throat> but you can do either way. You can, you can, you can text me the remainder of your spells and I'll just input them for you. Or, um, okay. or you can just get online and do it yourself, whatever you feel like doing. Right, but regardless, whenever the character is finished, tell me, or I'll tell you, and then I'll, I'll um, 
I'll export it and send you the XML file to give to your DM. All right. Sound good? Sounds good. Sounds awesome. Thanks for your help. Yeah, no problem. I'll, um, uh, you're, are you, are you going to, you're done with this to, for tonight, right? Yeah, I'm done, I'm done for tonight. I think I'm going to leave it up just a couple more hours just in case when someone shows up a little bit later, but. Yeah, yeah I'm going to be a little bit limited with how I can, um, play because in the school year, I'm, I'm excited to, to, to jump in, but, um, with gigs on the week, I have, I have to get up at like five o'clock in the morning, so I can't do a lot of, uh, weeknight games so oh right yeah as i'm worried about well what do you think what what is the length of the average um adventure league four hours four hours is usually the but but certain adventures are tailored to be shorter or longer you know and they they say that in the adventure and it should say that in the description that the dm gives you before you sign up got it so you should be aware uh but very few games run over four hours, um, but a lot of games are shorter than four hours. So, okay. you know, they're built for an eating's worth of play. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. But usually, what, do you usually have gigs on Fridays and Saturdays? Yeah, and then uh, I have a standing game on a Sunday. <laughs> so, on Sunday, yeah. Yeah, but, so if I... But yeah, you wake so up at Friday. five in the morning to get ready for school, you mean, right? On weekdays? Yeah, so it's so it's tough to like. I I I'd probably pick. I try to wait around, and, and there'll be a night where like Jen goes out and put the kids to bed, and yeah, um, do it that way. Or also, if I don't have a gig on a Friday night, I can I can see myself jumping in on a Friday night at eight o'clock type of thing. Right, right. But sometimes I have gigs on Friday night, so I just have to kind of play it by ear and check the message board and see what's available. So totally. it might it might be yeah, it might be a month or two before I can actually. It all works out. It can also it can also benefit you too because a lot of these guys are like in way different time zones. Like some of them are in Europe and stuff like that, and which so they have crazy hours. And um, but the, some of the best are like whenever they're whenever they're in the United States, but further west than us. So they're starting at a an earlier time, which is an hour like later for us. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it sometimes it just works out better. You know what I mean? Right. Um, right. So yeah, du- definitely double because all those times. If you selected the correct time zone when you signed up for the site, it will adjust the start times to reflect the time zone that you're in. So right. you're going to see a lot of start times that seem like really, really weird until you realize that they're they're playing from a different time zone. You know, that makes um, sense. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but there always there'll be there'll be something there for you. You know, like I don't I don't have all the time. In the, you know, I wake up at five thirty in the morning every day too. You know, and it's yeah. Um, you know, I have to kind of pick and choose my times, but right. Yeah. Well. But you'll figure it out. And definitely, um, it, you know, uh, let me know if you get into a game because I want to know and then I want to tune into that Twitch channel so I can watch you play the game. <laughs> and I will harass you on chat. It'll be awesome. There you go. Oh, my God. You tell me what to do. <laughs> right? All right. Sounds good. All right, dude. Well, have a good night and uh, say hello to everyone for me. All right. We'll do. Um, I'll let you know when I get this worked out. Yeah, totally. Do you want me to export this character and send it to you, or do you want to just wait till you until you find the time to figure it, to add in the last minute stuff? Yeah, you can wait. I don't want to have the balls to jump into a game without knowing what I'm doing with my spells and everything. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, I understand. Yeah, no problem. All right. All right. So, I'll let you know though. All right. Sounds good. Have a good night, man. All right. Sounds good. Good night. Good Thanks. Night. Yep. All right.